Okay, having our static meshes and our lights disappear is obviously not all we're going to need to do here. So let's set up some other behavior. I'm going to jump straight into Kismet. And what we're going to do is set up a system such that when the player collects a key, they're going to get a little bit of health, and then they're going to switch out for a UI scene. Now let's take a quick look at those UI scenes as well. So we have a UI scene here that has a single key and then another one with two keys, and then a third one with three keys. And we're going to be swapping these out. So the first time they pick up a key, they'll see this UI scene. The second time, we'll swap it out for this one. The third time, we'll swap it out for that one. And then they will have kind of a visual indication of their inventory. Now, as soon as they have that third key, we're also going to set up an established internal variable that we can use in the system later, which basically says, hey, they've got all the keys, so now they can finish the game. So let's go ahead and close the content browser, jump back into mat uh, not matinee, but kismet. We'll deal with matinee later. Now, the first thing I want to do is heal the player when they pick up a key. So let's right-click, go to New Action, Actor, and we're going to choose Modify Health. Now, I'm going to take the toggle output. You can choose either one of the, either the toggle or the toggle hidden. I'll just grab the toggle. And we're going to plug the outs of all three of them into the ends of the modify health. Now, whose health are we going to modify? The players. So let's right-click, go to new variable, player, and switch off all players, and plug that in. Now, for the amount, set this to 50, and make sure you check the heal checkbox. Otherwise, you'll actually be taking health away, and picking up the keys will kill the player, and that's no good. Okay, now, we need to switch between our three... UI scenes. So the first time we want to open up the one key, the second time two keys, third time three keys. So we're going to start off with a switch sequence action. So new action, switch, and just a basic switch. Go ahead and select this, and we're going to set the link count up to three, one for each UI scene. And go ahead and grab the toggle outputs and plug all three of them in just like you did with the modify health. Now let's right click and we'll create a new UI scene open action and we'll just plug that into link one. Now let's get this set up with the appropriate UI scene. So I'll close out of Kismet for a moment, open up the content browser, make sure you select UI key one. We'll close out and let's jump back into Kismet and we'll just plug this into the scene property. Now I'm going to duplicate this action, so Control c Control v Control v make two copies of it, one for each scene, and we're going to need to update that scene property. Now we could do that through the content browser, but the naming is such that you can just take the one at the very end and set it to two, grab the third one, and then take the one at the end, and this time set it to three, and there you go. Now we're not just going to plug these straight in. What we need to do first is close out whatever we had previously. So this is going to be a two-step process. First off, we're going to establish a global variable for our scene. So let's right-click over here in our global variables area, create a new object variable, which I will name key scene, like so. Now with that set up, let's fly back down here, and we will create a new named variable, which we will name key scene and we'll plug that into the open scene so we just opened up UI key one and we're going to store that inside the key variable now as soon as link two is called the first thing we want to do is close whatever is stored in this variable so let's right click go to new action UI scenes close scene plug this into link two now, for the scene input at the bottom, just drag a little pink wire up here to the guy that just got opened. So the second time around, we're going to start off by closing what was open a moment ago. Upon success of that closure, we'll open the next scene. See how that works? Now let's grab this closed scene, and we'll copy it. I'll disconnect all the links. And link three, we'll start off by closing what was open before. So what we need to do now, I'm going to grab our key scene and just make a copy of it. So the second time around, we'll also store the variable. The third time around, we will close what was stored, and we will open the third scene. So you see how the flow works? The first time the switch is called, we open up a scene and we store it inside this variable. 
The second time it's called, we close the scene that was stored inside this variable, and we open up a brand new scene, which we then store in the variable. The third time, we start off by closing whatever was stored in the variable, and we open the third and final scene. So now we're good to go. The last thing I want to do is set up a variable so that our system is aware that the player has all of our keys. So let's come back up here to the global variables. And I'll start making a column here. So let's right-click, new variable, a boolean, which has a default value of false, and that's perfect. Take the var name and set it to b has keys, like so. And we'll come back down here to our network, which is steadily growing. And we're going to right-click, new action, set variable, boolean. So upon success of opening our scene, we're going to set a boolean variable. What are we going to set? Well, we need a named variable that's referencing back to b has keys. So named variable, var name, b has keys. And we get a little green checkbox. This is the guy we're changing, so that has to plug into the target. What are we going to change it to? Let's right click, create a new boolean variable, which we will set to 1 or true. So we're setting b has keys to true as our final step. Now to test this, what I'm going to do is oh, take our boolean variable. This is a really cool trick if you didn't already know about it. Take your object comment and set this to something like player has all of the keys. And I'll put a smiley face there just for effect. And then we'll take the output object comment to screen and check that. Let's close out Kismet and test the level. Still getting those black cinematic bars. I should switch those off. I think we'll do that next. Now, bink. Oh, we got a key up in the inventory. That's good. Yep, we got another key. How about the third one? We're going to get it. Yep. And check it out. Player has all of the keys. And we even get a little smiley face for our effort. So now let's jump back into Kismet. And we can go ahead and switch off object comment there. I mean, you can leave that sort of thing on while you're debugging. But at some point, you're going to want to switch it off. And I don't want to forget. Now, last thing, we had those black bars at the top and bottom of our view. If we jump back into the game, you can see these. It makes it look like we're watching a movie, but we're not watching a movie. We're playing a game, so we need to switch those off. Now, to switch those off, we just have to find our camera, which we cleverly stuck up in the air so it would be easy to find. Select the camera, press F4, and grab the camera actor, and you have Constrain Aspect Ratio set to On. Kill that. Switch that off. And then we'll ignore this aspect ratio property. The cool thing about doing that is that now when we test, we're just using full resolution. So now things are a little bit cleaner, and the view doesn't feel quite so constrained. Alright, so that is going to wrap things up for this video. We now have all of our key pickups set up, and we can move on from here. So be sure to save your level.